It's actually the, fir the very first time someone said, uh, so many people said good morning, Jonas, to me. So, But it actually gives energy. Thanks. That's good. Whoa. Um, okay, what am I supposed to speak about? Um, the Pyramid is Dead was this the, the title that popped up in my mind when I actually I was asked if I could come and share some uh, some insights uh, about the way we organize work and the way we organize our company in general. Um, the pyramid is dead. I, I, I thought about that because in the end, I mean, all those things that we put uh, in place and this different way of doing that we that we that we start uh, right now is actually anti pyramidal all the time. So I think it's just broken. That pyramid is broken, and I, I really am convinced, and we are all, I mean, most of us at LEAP are really convinced that the pyramid is not the way to go in the future. And this is actually, it brings me to my objective for today. I have two objectives. The first one is really to showcase you that there are other ways to organize companies, to organize work. And also, maybe if I'm lucky, uh, um, maybe you will believe me that this is the only way to be successful for a company in the 21st century. Before we get started, um, some words about Leap, uh, about, about myself, maybe first. Uh, I'm 37 years old. I have two small children, so I'm a happy father. I live in Fribourg, so I, which makes it that uh, I had to, to get up really early this morning, 5.30. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Um, and I, I have joined Lib six years ago. Uh, I was the first uh, Roman person in that company, and I was, that was my task to 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 develop our Latin side. Um, before that, I actually worked in a in a big multinational company, so I really went into the pyramid and I saw how it worked, and I saw what are its advantages and what are what they are not. That also, that they are not advantages. And um, before that, I was a web developer. So I wanted to come back to the web world after my experience in that corporate. And, and when I joined uh, Leap, I actually found myself again in that in the passion of the web. And I started to experiment there. So what we do is really web-focused stuff. I mean, we basically do anything that you can open in a browser, uh, in, a, in, in, a, in, an in a mobile application, or, in a pl or on a tablet application. This is all that those experience, the, the design, and the, the development, and everything that is tied to that. Um, we organize a bit in a different way. I mean, you will see uh, some examples after. Uh, and we could say that we are somehow self-managed. I will explain, give more information about that. Uh, we are also calling ourselves an agile company. Uh, we also are really into agile project management, and that kind of inspired the way we are also organized as a company. And we always try to have a sustainable view and uh, are really human-centered as a company. That means we the, the company, I mean, it means you are not as uh, an employee working for the company, but it's more like the company is for you. It's kind of reversing, trying to reverse the, the, whole, the whole idea. OK, let's get into the, the topic of today. I wanted to start with this quote because I think it's quite interesting. You you know this guy Peter Drucker? He was is is an American. I mean, originally he's from Australia, but is 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 a management consultant that lived in America most of his years, and uh, he was called one of the uh, creators of modern management. Uh, right now, he's died. Actually, he died in 2005. Very aged guy, but but he he had very uh, interesting ideas and interesting thoughts. And 
this thing, uh, this, this quote, actually, I thought it, it, it would fit here. The greatest danger in times of turbulence is not the turbulence itself. It is the fact to act with yesterday's logic. Now, who of you think that we are in times of turbulence? Economically speaking. Good. Oh, <laughs> I was not sure someone was going to raise hands. <laughs> if you wouldn't have, I would, I would be in trouble now. Um, what I wanted to say is that, of course, we're in time of turbulence. And it seems, it, it looks to me that it's not ending right now or next year. So I think it's time to innovate. It's time to find different ways to do things. Uh, before I give you some concrete examples of uh, things we do at Leap, I wanted to, to take some step back and look a bit at how, how organized wor organizations worked since the beginning of mankind. Or, uh, yeah, like how were, what type of organizations showed up as, as the humans evolved. And, um, you know, it's one of my passion that thing because I mean it's really is I mean it's great and I'm living it and every day at work and I, I read a lot of things and uh, I stumbled upon uh, a year a year ago or a year and a half a year ago I think it was a book from a guy called Frédéric Laloux uh, mo probably some of you know uh, him and uh, his book is reinventing organizations I will give you the link uh, or speak about that uh, right at the end of the presentation and this guy ha actually has a, brings a key a hypothesis. And this hypothesis says every time humanity has shifted to a new stage of consciousness, it has also invented a radically more productive organizational model. Or we can also say that each time mankind has evolved significantly, there is a corresponding new type of organization that emerged. Right? You follow me here or you don't understand anything I say? Okay, <laughs> I look at your smiles, and sometimes some people smile, some people are, are not smiling. Some, some of you are getting tired already. <laughs> so I want to I want to dive into that really quick, like for the next five minutes. The very first type of organization that emerged is actually what they what he calls the red type of organization that sh that came up with the tribal. Uh, world. Uh, that means, like at the very beginning, like 10,000 years ago, people were people were organized as tribes, uh, as tribes, right? Um, this is what we can call also impulsive organizations, and they were really based on fear. Uh, if you want a metaphor for this, you could use a pack of wolves. I mean, the chief is the one that is the stronger, and uh, and he, he always he is defied by the others. And sometimes, he, he, when he loses, he loses his status. I mean, he's probably dying of pain and and uh, because of the others. Uh, there was uh, anyway. I mean, this was quite deorganized. It was kind of chaos still there. But uh, there was a, uh, something interesting that came up. Was the first division of labor. This is when we actually started to divide the work. Okay. Next big change uh, was uh, came with the agrarian age. Uh, this is what we call amber or conformist organizations. Uh, and what's in I mean, it started probably about 3,000, 4,000 years ago. Uh, and it's, uh, this is when we actually started to have the first kind of hierarchy, right? This is when we actually could be able to start draw um, um, an organizational chart. And if you want a metaphor for this, you can think about the army, right? They showed up. I mean, the, the, the Egyptians already had armies and were organized like that. Uh, this is also when uh, people started actually to trust an authority. Next one, uh, those are more modern. Uh, this is uh, modern times, like it, it came up with the 20th century. Uh, this is an achievement type of organization that we call also orange color orange and the key thing that appeared here was innovation innovation is key to these companies right and also some characteristics of those companies is that they are really focused on profit and growth and they are characterized today as huge corporates huge companies still around that are here for 120 years or like that right the last one most recent 
I mean, it's not the last one, it's the one before. <laughs> but the most recent one that we know came up, those, those green type of organization that we can call also pluralistic, if you want a metaphor, we can think about a family, uh, is those strongly culture-driven organizations like uh, Southwest Airlines, Ben & Jerry's, that kind, of, that kind of organizations. That came up like really recently, about 30 years ago maybe. Now, um, what's interesting here is that all of those type of organizations are organized using a classical pyramidal structure, still, even the green ones, right? And uh, it seems that there is another way that is emerging as now the world becomes more complex, the companies become more complex. And uh, it's quite interesting actually how uh, Frédéric Laloux positions that. He calls that evolutionary types of organization and the color is teal. So I want to give you the three main key points that character characteristics, I would say, from these organizations, the new ones that, that are, are actually popping up now. The first point is self-management. It is not based on a pyramidal structure anymore, but is, it is organizing work around peer relationship rather than hierarchy, right? The second, second one is about is the whole concept of wholeness. This means the people that join, that come to work to this place, to, this, to these companies, they come as a whole. They do not come with the mask of the work. Like maybe some of you can experience that they are, they can feel maybe that they are not completely the same when they are at work and when they are at home. Or maybe this, they are sometimes even completely different persons. <laughs> I always have this image that comes to my mind of of um, of New York stock brokers that that enter that that leave their happy family uh, in the morning, go down into the metro uh, with their ties and, and and suits and come out there as a, as as sharks, being sharks for a whole day and coming back home, and when they uh, and when they are enter the home they are not sharks anymore they are happy father with a family uh, right. Um, and uh, the this, this, this third point, third characteristic of these, uh, these new types of, of organization is that they have an evolutionary purpose. It means that the purpose is actually evolving. Um, it, it's not defined up front like they go there, but it's like they, the, the, they have their own purpose that is evolving with themselves. They have a reason for living. Now, um, what I think is that in our company, we are going this way. I would not say that we are teal completely yet. I will show you why. But I think we are between, between a green and a teal one. And there is some indicators that makes leap close to teal. And here they are. Like already, we could say we thought about four of them. Um, it means at our company, there is a lot of uh, initiatives, may they be business or technology, that are driven by anyone in the organization. Uh, they would, someone would have an idea, present that, and it would just happen. Okay, this is the first thing. The second thing is that we are 130 people, but we have no middle management. No middle management. Uh, right now, we we are only six partners. That is kind of the the last uh, step of hierarchy we have in the company. In, in fact, we still ha we have only two steps of hierarchy. We have a partners and we have all the leapers, the other leapers. And it's not even really true anymore, but that's a different story. <laughs> um, so we have, no the, we have no titles, we have no managers, uh, head of uh, blah, 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 thing, uh, CEO, uh, senior, blah, blah, stuff. We don't really care. I mean, actually, we have, we have kind of, we have roles that are in our names uh, that are as titles, and we don't have title problems because we do not have people that fight be to become a senior manager. Because I have been a manager for four years, so I need, I can have a senior in front now, and I don't understand why I don't have it because my 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 neighbor has it already. So I start to be jealous. You know, I mean, you know those things. If you have worked in big, big companies, it, it, those things happen, right? Also, another indicator at LEAP is that the salary ratio is, is quite low. Uh, we have a one to three, uh, from the lowest to the highest salary. Um, I don't know the, the, 
I don't know the the average number, but it's very, very, very high, very much higher. <laughs> Uh, and uh, for 130 liter, we have about 4.5 FTE, that means full-time e equivalent, kind of 450% management, uh, official, official management. So now more concretely, how does it work? Some example, because this is why you are here. Um, I wanted, actually before that, I wanted to, uh, there's a lot of things to say, right? Uh, after that, we can, uh, you can ask questions, and, and, and but I wanted to focus those, some examples on three, three main areas, three main topics. The first one is empowerment, how we deal with that, how we, how we manage to have empower, uh, to empower our people and our, the organization. The second is people. I mean, uh, what do we do for our people and some concrete examples? And the third one is about strategy, right? So I'm going to give those three examples, and then I'm happy to, to take your questions and to, to, to speak about others as well. So empowerment. Uh, we need here to dive back uh, at the beginning of LEAP. LEAP started about 10, a bit more than 10 years ago as a very small team, right? We had this small team. There was a project, so work wa was really organized around projects. We have a project, we just do that project. Now it starts getting a bit bigger. Uh, okay, we have to start a to, to do a second team. Uh, still do work on project, but it starts to be more complex, right? Okay, more people, more people, more people. Okay, let's now we need management because we are, we are enough people. It seems that we need to have management power. So some people become management. Right, this is what you how this is the first stage of how we were organized actually. Uh, but we noticed that it was kind of uh, a mess of how we we had to um, our organizing work that way was 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 quite hard actually. So we decided to do another way. We then, this was in two thousand seven. Uh, no, it was it was later. It was two thousand ten already that we organized really fixed teams. This is also at that moment that we actually started to do to apply uh, the Scrum project methodology to all our projects uh, and really 100%, like not only taking one or two interesting things of that methodology, but really doing it to like, in, like to the details. And this is at that moment that we actually started to form fixed teams. That means people that are always working together. So we had project teams. Uh, here you see, can see there are three project teams, and the projects that we would have would just join those teams, like ar arrive to the team that would be available. If this one is the next team available, then the next project that comes would come here, and we would not take three persons that are available in the company and put them on a project. Right? This is all. This was all already a shift uh, in, in the way we organize the work. Um, so we had those teams that got a bit bigger and um, we then had product teams of course I just go to the end of those here we had those product teams and then as we grew I mean the other functions were also important right we had administration that was important marketing business development sales uh, and all of them were also grouped in fixed teams but they were uh, in separate teams. They were not product teams. Were developers, designers, project managers, and then we would have sales here, uh, marketing here, admin here, management there. So those. This is how we were organized from 2010 to 2013, probably 12, 13. And we changed that actually because we noticed also that uh, as we grew, it didn't work anymore. I mean, we were probably about. When we last time changed, we were about maybe 70 people, 60 people already. And problems starting appearing like, what the hell did sales sell to the client? <laughs> when those guys would say, right? And, <laughs> and uh, we noticed that they were, we were missing actually communication between that. And we had, we had actually, we didn't want that, but we had created silos. Like it is in huge companies where actually a uh, business unit doesn't speak with the other or the sales do their work and then they hand it over to delivery, which takes the, it from there and with all the problems that, 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 that happen. So then we, s we, we thought we would we need to shift again. And we tried something totally new. 
um, we mixed everything and we created cross-functional teams. And this was the key thing that, that allowed us to continue growing again. And uh, I mean, things have very much improved since we have done those cross-functional teams. What does a cross-functional team mean? It means that a team becomes autonomous as there is a, uh, a th there are people that are allowed that are able to take all the roles needed from a project to A to Z. Right now, one of these teams, for example, they could handle a client, they could sell something to him, they could manage the project for him, they can develop the project, they can design it, and they can follow it up all by themselves. And it's still in a size that is not too big. I mean, the the biggest teams are now, it's, it's a size between, I would say, six, seven people to about 15, maybe a bit more. And then the teams, when they get too big, they split. So, uh, but we always try to make sure that uh, there is enough sales, enough project managers, enough uh, developers, uh, th that this team is balanced, right? Now, you could say, okay, this is fine. This is some small companies. Okay, business units, we also know that. Uh, that happens in traditional organization, but we still need a way to align ourselves, right? So we created what we call guilds, and this is taken from Spotify, actually. Uh, we, we read quite a lot uh, on how Spotify organi actually organized themselves. Spotify n uh, went, went from a from less, I mean, probably 50 per person on working on development to 250 in, I don't know, but it's really, really like one year or something. So they really had to scale and to be careful about it. Um, so we learned about them and, and we also took uh, took the, the, some of the namings they, they, they use and uh, we created guilds, you know, guilds like a communi community of practice, like in the old age, people that would be uh, have an expertise on some type of topic. And we have now guilds that form and go uh, in, in many different subjects. For for example, now um, the commercial people, the sales people, are organized are all in the sales guild, in the business development guild, but they are all physically located in their team. Okay. Right now, we only have uh, one team that is not in integrated yet. It's admin administration. Right now, because we do not need to have one per admin person in each team because it's not needed. And also there are still some central uh, st stuff that is done centrally like finance or uh, invoicing or that kind of thing. But we are thinking of about uh, improving that as well and also integrating those people into the teams in each location. Um, uh, here also a challenge is that we are located in five offices and five offices are, are not that close. I mean, well, they're all in Switzerland, but it's in Lausanne, Fribourg, Bern, uh, Zurich, and St. Gallen. And, and we, in some offices we have many teams, in others we just have one. Just depends on the situation. Okay? So this was about uh, how uh, we organize work. and. Basically, now the self-organizing teams, they actually sell the product, uh, uh, they, they sell the products, they produce and they maintain the projects that they have. I already said that. But they're also able to hire the people that they need. Um, we, are, we are working on the fire topic as well, because it's also important that they are able to do that. We really have a chance right now because we are in a growing market, so we have more cha challenges hiring the good people, and we do not need to fire that much people, <laughs> actually. But we also need to work on that as well, so that they are really totally independent. They also take care of themselves if they want to innovate and in what they want to innovate. Basically, we can say they can do what they want, but they take the responsibility. But you will maybe some of you will tell me, uh, okay, uh, that's fine, but are there some constraints, some things that we have to respect? Yes, they are, of course. And we define that as, as the same time as we define the cross-functional teams. Uh, we thought there was three very important axes. I mean, if those three are green, all green, I mean, the team is very fine. Uh, and the those that we define were those three. The client delightment, the team morale, or we could also say the employee happiness of this team, 
and the profitability, of course, but I mean, we, could, we still need to earn salaries. <laughs> so uh, those the teams need to track those three uh, those three axes um, regularly. I mean, they are free to track it the way they want for the both first ones. I mean, some of them use the Timorale metrics, which is one metric that is, if you look on the web for that, you can find stuff. Or the other ones use just the happiness metric, which is another way. There are other ways as well. And the client, client delightment, well, we also, we, we always have a, a process at the end of, of a project. We, we ask the clients a few questions, and sometimes we do interviews to make sure they were delighted. <coughs> and, it's, and, it's, and I insist here, it's delightment. It's not satisfaction. It's more because it's our it's the way we also have more and more projects because people are delighted so they become promoters okay just an example on the profitability here is just a typical dashboard that the team has uh, and this is the only thing that is the same for all teams it shows them from a week to week or month perspective or year perspective if they are in green or if they are in red or if they should be careful about I mean, it's it's. I mean, our business in the end, we are a service company. It's about selling hours, so we can calculate that quite easily, which is good. That was for the the empowerment. So the, this old structure here gives us the possibility to empower the people. Okay, and we do not need managers then that decide for them. If we speak about people, uh, it's important to say for us that leapers they are our most Precious asset, of course. As I said before, we are a service company. What is important for hey, for us is gray matter, right? We need to have a place that is attractive because we, uh, as I said before, the challenge is growing, but with the right people, with good people that develop themselves. So we came up with a whole lot of that. That came up from through the year, through the la, through the years. But oh, we don't we don't see that much. That's good of a picture here. This is actually I took that picture this week uh, when two of our colleagues were actually playing ping pong in in our terrace in the office with the lake in, be in behind and the, and the sun here. It shows up totally differently here, but that's. <laughs> Just to show you the, an example that, for example, in the, La in the Lausanne office, we have a ping pong table on the terrace that people can play uh, anywhen, anywhere they I mean, at any time they want. But we also have a whole health concept uh, for our people, where like, basically every, every semester they can choose uh, if they want to go to massage, if they want to go to yoga classes, if they want to have a ping pong coach and that comes every month. Or if they want to go uh, for, I mean, we have uh, we we have nutrition as well, uh, nutrition courses, and I mean it's free to choose. Uh, you have a maximum budget you can use, a maximum number of days per semester, and and it's just regulated like that. There is no need to ask for permission. You could just go, as long as you still have budget. You can decide yourself. And uh, other things that are also very, very important for us is like, for example, part-time work. Uh, any person that joins Leap can choose between 80 and 100% when they, they come. It's not, I mean, for us, we notice that actually it's just, a, it's just a matter of work organization and we're used to that. Uh, uh, Two-thirds of a company is working part-time now. So it's, it doesn't make that much of a difference. Uh, in terms of organization, but it makes a, a lot of difference in terms of hiring because we have a lot of young dads like I was that want to have a career but cannot do it, w uh, hardly do it in, uh, in, uh, in another company if they are not working 100 or 150 percent, right? So, and, also th and it's also good for, 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 the, for the wives as well, I mean, to, to allow that. Um, Non-paid leaves are also something that is uh, that is happening, that is possible for us, uh, up to three months. It's not threatening your place at work. Uh, what can I say? Flexible work time. Uh, if you were if you work in a train with your laptop and your and your uh, and your mobile phone, it's very fine that you book your hours into our system. I mean, people can basically work anywhere they want. It's very fine, as long as it's fine with their team, right? The team is really the supreme entity in our company. So you need to check that it's okay with your team 
for example, if you w if you want to take off the Fridays, then you should check that uh, because you're working 80%, you should check with your team that the Friday is okay with the team, because we do not want uh, a mess and that is uh, in in the team for the team meetings and those those kind of things. Good. Uh, this was about people. Uh, there's other things to say, but maybe you will, you'll ask me questions. Uh, this, the last point here uh, is about strategy, and uh, this is very important, interesting because um, we have no strategy, actually, and we don't need a strategy. We do not need to speak about that and spend time speaking, uh, planning five years plan, growth plan. Uh, uh, trying to put numbers and 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 achieve that growth and that kind of stuff. We don't really care actually. We react to things that happen. We want to have happy employees. We have to. We are. We want to make great projects. And if we have that, I mean, then we will grow. Okay, this is more consequence. Actually, this year we are growing thirty percent, which is a lot, uh, really a lot. And it's also it's also a challenge. But we did, we never planned to grow thirty percent. We actually are hiring people because we need those people to continue working. And we do not do expensive business plans, so we do not have to pay consultants that are trying to draw a strategy for us <laughs> as well. So we just keep it, keep, keep it simply stupid and the, the simple and stupid. <laughs> and the thing is, is actually we consider the company like, a living, like kind of a living organism. And here it was also well expressed in that book I spoke about earlier. This all evolutionary pur purpose is about considering your company as a complex organism of people, of links between those peoples. And the key challenge is be able to listen to that organism, to, be, to adapt it as it goes, and to, to, to ab adapt it uh, to, uh, to, toward its purpose. So we don't really know uh, what is our I mean, we never know what is our purpose because it's changing most of the time. I mean, it's changing from year to year. We have values that we stick to, and then we take those, de those decisions by listening to our employees, by listening to our clients, and and we do not spend too much time drawing slides and big plans for the future. Okay? This sounds nice and lovely, right? But it's not that easy. There are still things that uh, that 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 needs to be to to be fixed, and I mean it's it's a constant work in progress. Um, we are not quite totally teal right now as a company. Um, we are heading towards that, and there are sti still some things that that needs to be to be addressed. And uh, those are five that came up in my mind: um, salary, for example, is still something that is not totally transparent. I mean, we have a grid of salaries, but we do not have. Uh, I do not know in exactly where is positioned my colleague. The only person that that is officially announced are the management person, the partners. They, we everybody knows the salary, our salary. Uh, the conflict management is also an issue. Is that as as we give more more uh, more freedom, then we need to develop th those the ability to 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 manage conflict. Um, because uh, I mean, if, uh, if you have a boss, then he usually solves the conflict by deciding. But here we don't have a boss, so people need to be able to know how to speak and to to solve that. Um, for bigger budget decision, for example, if you want to invest a 300k or 500k in a new office, for example, who decides that? It's not solved yet. <laughs> and there's there are of course some legal limitations. Uh, right now, we still have uh, we we are subscribed at the Regis du Commerce, uh, where the six partners can actually sign. Um, this is actually still the case. So, and of course, if there is a big big crisis, if we have not work anymore for half of our people, how do we manage that? How do we do that? But that's all, those are very exciting questions that we will have to solve in the in the in the coming years. I want to just give you some quick takeaways before. Questions? This is the last slide before. Um, it is not that easy to do. It takes time if we want to go this down this path. The mindset of the team, the mindset of the people is hugely important. Uh, if you are ready to for the, that kind of change, it's going to happen quite fine. It's going to take time, but it's going to happen. 
if you do not want to go in there. Because I mean, some, for some people, it's reassuring to have a manager. Because if they know how to please their manager, they're safe in that kind of organization. In our type of organization, you have roles where you have to give uh, them feedback uh, to, to different roles and not to only one person. So sometimes it might be a bit uh, tricky in the beginning. Uh, we also have a chance to be in a growing market, of course. I mean, the, it's a usually growing market, so it's it's less uh, an issue to implement. And then, for going further, we are wondering now: should we continue to do it the self? Uh, I mean, uh, how we do it ourselves, like defining our changes, uh, reorganizing ourselves again, or should we take something from the shelf? When I say from the shelf. There start to ha to be some some frameworks like holacracy, for example, which you heard maybe, which is one framework that, that we could take and implement in our company. And right now we are trying to learn about that, to see ag again, listen to the people, uh, learn about what it is, and and see if it fits to us or not. And we're not sure yet, but we're 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 really uh, tackling that right now. If you're interested in that, I mean those. Uh, do I mean, uh, some things that are in my presentation, they are in this book, Reinventing Organization, that I really recommend. There is also a uh, YouTube videos of this guy of about one hour that outlines the key concepts. Dan Pink, uh, this book is came up a long time ago, but it's he, he, this guy also, also wrote some interesting stuff about motivation. You maybe heard about autonomy, mastery, purpose. This is all a lot of things that inspire us as well. And finally, for the more technical aspects, organization, I mean, the, the teams, how the teams are organized and stuff, we really also took some ideas from, from Spotify. So there are a great, great blog also that you may, may want to read. And I think I'm done here. So I would gladly take your questions. Thank you. So we don't have a second mic, so please just uh, speak up and uh, speak to them like loud so that we can hear you and Jonas is going to answer a question. Please. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, it's fine. Why do you think they were competing? <laughs> yeah, but if you s if I ask why again? Because they yeah because they s they they receive money for that. Yeah. We don't. I mean, this this makes a big change. I mean, we have we have bonuses, but it's the whole company or or no one. So you have, uh, I mean, if uh, if you see that, uh, I mean, if your team is performing great, which happens, I mean, uh, if you get a huge client with a huge project, then your team is performing great. And sometimes you, you can even manage to free up, I mean, some salespeople maybe will, uh, will have more time than at this moment because they know that for the next six months, you're in the same projects. So they will gladly go and help another team that is maybe in the orange, in, in I mean, in, 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 in her dashboard, and and because it in the end it's also getting he's also getting a bonus on that on, on the whole company. Sometimes there might be some frustration though from the performing teams that they say, "Oh, we are performing great," and then the other ones are not performing that great. That's not true, and then we don't get the bonus in the end of the year. Ha! Huh. But then there is also a lot of tr of luck in that kind of thing. We all we often had. I always say that to those teams that say, oh, okay, we are performing great, nah, 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 and they, they start to uh, not being that happy. I always say, just wait. Wait a year, and then most of the time the situation changes. The next year, it's the other team that is performing great, and and the, the, the other one that has more trouble. So it's okay. It works like that. I think the bonus is really, really important. Individual performance wouldn't work in our organization, and team-based performance would create silos. Exactly. Uh, yes. Yes. 
<laughs> so a team is <laughs> a team is a group of people that can deliver projects, and that means there is a lot of roles and of 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 skills that is needed to do that. You will have, uh, I mean, I would say I would say about a typical team that is about twelve people. I would say is going or twelve, fifteen people is going to be composed of two to three person that take care of project management and sales. And uh, usually they are to get together because we do not do that much proactive selling because right now we do not really need it. So we mo we more we do not have traditional uh, salespeople that are always on the road and having uh, 20 meetings per per week. We do not have that. We just have people that answer RFPs. And those are the same guys that sometimes would manage the projects. So that means we would have two or three of those guys that really take care of the client side. And then we have another role that is a Scrum Master. And the Scrum Master is taking care of that the team works well. But he doesn't care about the client's priorities. So already here there is a split between the roles. But because in a traditional team you would have all this responsibility in the, in the project, man project manager management role which is actually the guy that hires, that organizes, that assigns work, and that is the face to the client. Here it splits. The client is on, on some role, and, and the organization is on other roles. And then we have developers. We have UX designers. We have uh, uh, graphical designers, uh, sysadmins, that are here to deliver the projects as well. And then, um, so the team is auto-managed in this way with these different roles. And there is a structure in the, the Scrum methodology uh, brought us this structure, this the way we do meetings, how often we do them, what kind, what type of meetings should we do, uh, and actually it is auto managed because that structure is respected. So there is no need for someone that just decides for for everyone else. But they define themselves roles. I mean, uh, uh, and and in, if you're in your role, you're free to to decide because it's your responsibility. Is that clear? Yes. What is the hardest crisis we had to face within this organization? The last one. Oof. Uh, Actually, the crisis was was with, with the organization. The, the hardest moment was with the the organization for before, when we started to have the silos, the sales guys, the the, the dev team, and then the others. Right now, uh, I think there is still a challenge in alignment, making sure that we do not do the thing twice in two different teams. So there are the guilds for that, but still, sometimes, I mean, it can happen that in Zurich a team does something, and in Lausanne the other team kind of does the same. So we need to speed up, we need to have more communication on this level. I would say this is a challenge that right now. And then also uh, the other challenge is as we hire a lot of people, is onboarding. So that they understand this way of working, because nobody worked like that before. I mean, hardly anybody it did. So they always need some time to understand it. And sometimes they ask, who is my boss? Who should I ask? And I was like, oh, always laughing about that. So, OK, there was another question. How do we? How do you wear it? Do we rate? OK. Uh, what? What? Team morale. OK. Uh, <laughs> there is no process, actually. There is there is different ways to do it. Um, as I said, there there is. Uh, if you look in the in the internet, uh, there is a happiness index. Was the first one we used. We started using that five six years ago. It was used for another company co uh, funded by one of the creators of cr Scrum methodology. They used that, and then we tried we started using it, and we, we noticed we it went well. Then we kind of switch to team morale because uh, the happiness index. Uh, I mean, your p the things that were happening outside work were impacting a bit too much on your happiness index. Sometimes you would have a hard morning, then you would say, uh, "My happiness today is," uh, or because we rate that once a month. If it's the bad day, then you would say, uh, "My happiness is two. And actually, in, at work, it's okay. <laughs> 
Oh, we can, because if, if I ask you between one and five, how happy are you to be here today? How many ones? Twos. Threes. Come on. <laughs> ah, one. <laughs> Four. <laughs> five. Oh, yeah, that's good. Perfect. <laughs> Great. <laughs> and the team morale is actually something that came up after those happiness index. And there is also, if you look in uh, online, you would find there is, uh, there is like four of se or seven types of, of questions. A guy has done a lot of research about that and came up with, and we took those, these results of this research work for using that and it actually works well. Another question here. Mm -hmm. um, the guilds are also self-organizing. <laughs> Uh, I mean, um, they usually uh, get together regularly, like once a month or once every two months. Um, and then they distribute, and they, ha they usually have a, a space in our wiki where they put all the their information. They have a, t uh, a channel on our messaging service uh, Slack uh, where they actually discuss ongoing uh, between the offices the, the different things. Uh, yeah, and there, and there is that meeting that is at least once every three months, I would say to align, uh, to decide what the guild is going to present or push. For example, a technological guild would, would, would maybe decide a preferred st technological stack f than others or that kind of thing. Uh, so there is an alignment by a meeting every three months. Now we have questions. Now we have five. It doesn't work. Yeah. <laughs> One there. Everyone. Uh, I mean, the whole company here is just our hours, even the partners as well. We do that. Um, and we, I mean, at the beginning, when we started with that, we decided either we trust or we control. We decided to trust. So if you want to trick the system, you can at least. But we do not lose time with that because uh, I actually, we, we probably have <laughs> on 130 people, maybe, maybe five to 10 people that sometimes put too much hours. but. We do not need to control it, at least. I also, in our experience, it's, it comes automatically. Also, um, because the teams are those continuous improvement formats that is, like they have meetings, retrospective meetings, where they actually try to to fix stuff uh, re really regularly. So if there is a, pro a trust problem, it would show up at any moment, because they're all employees have a voice in those kind of meetings to say a problem that they have. And we have to, I mean, if it's really important, uh, we have to, the team is a bit, has to take care about it. But we do not have something very specific, specific to the trust. Are yes, are I can. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. We are facing them. Uh, we have to be careful uh, not to become like Google. Uh, no, I mean, I'm just a bit joking, but actually Google is, is really pyramidal still. I mean, the work is uh, probably in a team is great. I, I've never worked there, so, but probably it's really great to work in a team. It's fine. But then you still have a manager and a country manager and, an, and, and a manager on top of that. And this is, I mean, uh, this is because um, it's money driven in the end. I mean, there are investors that need money, so you need to maximize profit. And uh, for this, you need a pyramid. I think, I'm not sure it's, uh, it's the right answer, but we have to be careful about that. This is also why we do not really want, I mean, for now, we, we, we never decided to, to go into a bigger group of companies because we see it as a threat for this culture. But maybe sometime once we find uh, another c a bigger company that is fine like that. Zappos, maybe. I don't know. <laughs>
Excuse me? They are also really, really paramount. As I, I, I'm not an expert in that, but uh, I mean Zuckerberg is is always the head. I mean the on top there, and I think they are quite like that. Okay, okay, interesting. Yeah. Okay. Good. Thank you very much. I am happy to answer all the questions in the coffee.